What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Aston Shanae. Welcome back to The Juice. You were saying that the police came to your door to yes. take your son from you. Yes. What Winton happened and, that night? Winton and I were um, out shopping, mm -hmm. and uh, I had gotten a phone call from my attorney uh, telling me that I needed Who's to... Who's the attorney? You remember the name? Paget. Okay. Jay Paget called okay. me. And to give me uh, instructions that the uh, judge was saying that uh, Winter needed to be on a flight to his father. And uh, I was just really stunned. When you know that the law is being turned against you, and it's like, where do you go? Who do I tell at this point? When you know a judge is conspiring against you, and you know the police, who do you go and call at that moment to stop what's happening? Who do you, who do you call? Who's going to hear you? Who's going to listen to you? And obviously no one heard me, and no one listened to me, because my child was taken out of my yard. You know, it's like you're in a, a bad movie in a third world country or something, and you have no power. This has nothing to do with us. We're just doing what we are told to do. And my son is in the back of a town car that his father sent to Wait, the house. Wait, not a police car. Not a police car. A town car. The police car. was just there to keep me at bay, all armed up. Okay? Wow. A town car. Supposedly, it is just really wild. Uh, it still bothers me to this day. My son is in the back of a town car with a driver that he's never met, that I've never met. Upset, crying, calling for me. And I'm standing there with the policeman next to me, armed. Armed. And your child is looking at you, panic stricken. What do you do? Do I run in the house and call some more police? I don't think so. How, what do you do at that moment? Those are the things that wake me up in my sleep. That you, even when I want to not have those dreams, they are there. Because at that moment, my son wanted me to protect him from what was happening to him. And I couldn't. What, get into a fight with the police and get shot? You know, on something that's happening that's not even legal. So you say to yourself, why would somebody intentionally go this far to hurt you? Who, who did the... As a parent, how do you stop having that nightmare? How do you stop thinking about that? How that? How do you do that? I've, I, to this day, I've not. So Steve never even came to you to either try to contact you to discuss anything about you and Winton or no, custody no, about, with no, you and Winton? No, from day one, it was about, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to violate every visitation order that you have, and you're not going to do nothing about it because nobody's going to listen to you. I was irrelevant. I was irrelevant. I'm the star. You're irrelevant. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Whatever is in those documents doesn't even matter because I'm in charge here. And he clearly was in charge. Clearly. So, so Mary, he was in charge, but from my understanding, you, you were with Steve before he was known as Steve Harvey, the entertainer. Of course. You were with him uh -huh. when there weren't the houses and the TV shows. and So you were with him before any of this. Yeah, with him, like as in the trunk of the car with him. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I was that with it. Right. You know? Wow. Right. That's so, that's the me. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. so, you helped to build the empire. I did. You I helped did. to build the empire. There are businesses. Oh. Are businesses, I'm assuming? 50 you, some odd. 50 plus yeah. businesses and homes, vehicles. What else? Tell tell us what, what actually is in the empire. Oh, wow. You know what? Things are still being uh, discovered mm. at this point. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I found out that uh, there were businesses being hidden, you know, in the marriage that I didn't know anything about. Um, but that's a long conversation. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a really long conversation. So at the at the divorce decree, those assets, what did you see was the breakdown and there the was never there was never a real breakdown. There never was. You didn't see any the paper? judge the judge ordered uh, Steve to come forward with this is the totality of the two of you on paper. It never happened. He just refused to do it. And the judge let him get away with that. He just refused to do it. So when he went his separate way and you stayed or went, whatever the case may be, when you separated, what did he leave you with? What did you get at the, at the end of that day? What did you... At the end of the entire divorce, at the end of it, whenever it came about, which I don't know, because how do you... You go in there in 2005, and here you are in 09. In 09, four years later, I'm being put out of a home that was given to me as my sole separate property. So to me, so wait, when did the divorce a, stop? I don't even know when the divorce was official. A separate property, a sole separate awarded, property I was that awarded, you were awarded. Yes. But you were taken out of yes, that home. and it was taken back to court. What I know... What I know is what happened realistically. This is what happened. I got 10 payments. I got $40,000 10 times, 10 times, 10. The ranch property, our ranch that he calls his ranch or wherever he goes to do the mentoring or whatever, Mm -hmm. that was our property, okay? I had to relinquish my half of that for less than what it was worth. So I literally sold him my half of the ranch for $1.5 million. That's what I did. And that's the only money that I walked away from 16 years of marriage. 10 payments at $40,000. So we're talking about $400,000. Then we're talking about a 1.9, which He didn't give to me. I sold him my half of our ranch for 1.5, way below what market was. That's what I got for my 16 years. So no consistent alimony. No. No No child support. No. 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 And for anybody that's expecting me to get over that, they can forget about it. I'm not getting over that. No more than you would be on a job for 20 years and someone hands your pension to someone else, okay? Or you're medical to someone else. Or you're sitting in your living room, minding your own business, and you get an order from a constable telling you you got 30 days to vacate your own house. Then the house gets sold. Steve sold my house and kept all the proceeds from the house that he had the judge throw me out of. So for everybody advising me about how to deal with that. You know, I'm just kind of, I'm listening and I'm wondering what kind of relationship did y'all have to the point that he became that That, person? Me too. To, I mean, you're, you're the mother of his child. Right, right. So how can you it's be like, that okay, person? okay, we're not going to be married anymore. But why are you doing all of this, though? So that's why I'm trying to let everybody see who is really bitter here. Who's really bitter? If I was the problem and he wanted to move on, didn't he not move on? Yes. Didn't you not yes. move on to who you said you wanted? Then why are you being this mean to me? Right. You know, if this is who you have chosen after me, okay. But why are you doing this? And it's really odd because when I decided to file for divorce for the fourth and final time, I purposely chose Texas because we had that property out there on the lake. 
If I had chosen to file in Los Angeles and made a list of all the reasons why I was filing, he would have no career to return to. Wow. So I'm not the bitter person here. And at this point, I still could say a number of things that I would never say because I do love my son and I'm not in the destroy a person mindset. That's not what I do. So if I went to Texas to quietly dispose of everything, but then he chose that moment to say, oh, no eyes are upon us, so let me do this. So the question is, who's really bitter here? Who's really bitter? This is someone that he said he met some time ago and we reconnected. You're with this person and you should be happy with that person. So why are you coming after me? Why are you trying to destroy me after the fact? I'm out. That's what you wanted. That's what we wanted. So that, that to me, I, I never got. I never right. understood that. Why am I locked out of my child's life? You know? Okay. I've also seen like, you know, you know how they have a lot of stuff on the internet. Mm -hmm. What is this gag order? Oh, mercy. Um, I'm not real clear on what that is. You know, I think that after so much had been done undercover, so many laws had been broken, so many lies had been told, so much deceit and forgery and embezzlement and all this stuff had gone on. I think that at some point, somebody got afraid that I'd talk about it, you know? To me, it's like in all fairness, if I feel that I have been completely fair, I would want the whole world to know that I was completely fair. Why put a lock on that? If you were fair, tell everybody you were fair. And don't just open the book, don't just open the book a little bit. Because one time, I think it was in 2011, where there's supposed to be this gag order about what happened, right? But then he goes to Texas and the judge lets him peek into it long enough to say, she got 40000 a month up until 09. No, that's not true. How about the payments didn't start until 09? So what was happening between 2005 and 2009? Nothing was happening. So it's like they opened the book to give a little peek in there to mislead everybody. I did not get money up until 2009. Those payments didn't even start till 2009. This was four years after the initial divorce. So you I started getting alimony four years. So there's no alimony, nothing now? Nothing now. Nothing now. Nothing. I got 10 payments at $40,000 each, and then they just stopped because that's what he wanted. He didn't want that anymore. Or maybe she didn't want it. Maybe she said, oh, you Wait know. Minute. You but know? she's already set, so why this would she... This is what I'm saying. Why get concerned about what's happening to me? So, once again, who's really bitter here? Who is bitter? Is it me or is it the two of them? And why are they bitter toward me? You know, did I disrupt Marjorie's marriage, either one of them? Did I come between any of her children? What is it exactly that I did to Marjorie or to Steve? for them to be so completely disrespectful to me and my relationship with my son. So if you have somebody constantly doing that to you all the time, at what point do I wake up in my morning and be okay? You know, what, what point in my day do I say, oh, it's okay. I'm just gonna shake that off and get over it. Who, who, who does, who, who would do that? If I had all the success and all the whatever, and I'm with this other person in my life that I want to be with, I'm sure I would be way too busy to try to wreak havoc. And especially if you say you are a man of God, or you're a family man, and you're a Christian man, and you're a relationship man, all the things that should typically describe who you are, those things aren't manifesting themselves when the cameras are not rolling. So I, uh, just me being a mom, I respect the job because when God gives us children, he put them in our care and custody. He expects us to do right by our children. That's what he expects us to do. I know that as a mother, if I was ever in a position to where uh, 
I had to be in charge of somebody else's child. I definitely make sure they have a great relationship with that child, but I just don't see how Marjorie, in particular, can call herself a mother to her own children and deliberately try to sabotage my relationship with my son. I don't really get that because personally, you know, even if it was a, a vengeance vendetta thing, it's like who did harm to who? You know, if you did harm to someone, if it had been me in her position, I think I would move heaven and earth to try to make it right by this woman and her son. You Don't know? want to interrupt you, but are you a Marge friend or were y'all ever friends? You know what? That rumor was out there, but I, Marge and I were never friends. We were never, ever friends. I don't know how it got out there that I was confiding in her about my marriage. I never, never met the woman until after the fact. You know, voice over the phone once, and I didn't even know who the voice belonged to at that time, but I never knew her, never knew her. And even in all the years that uh, she's been stepmomming with my child, uh, we've never met face to face, you know. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, I don't believe in dysfunction. I was raised in dysfunction. I know what it is. I know the damage it can do. And I don't believe in that. And for the sake of my child, I have always, from day one, wanted to keep an open relationship so that Winton would not feel that he had to choose camps because that is so unfair and it is so unnecessary. And especially in this case, was it not necessary? And uh, I, I, to me, I'm always a communicator. To me, everything, let's talk about it. Let's put it on the table. And it's not about whether you like something or you don't like something. Let's talk about it, you know? That's just me. That's, that's, that's one of my pet peeves. I love communicating. But it would disturb me, really, uh, when family or friends would come to me and say, hey, I uh, saw Winton on the show today, and that would really disturb me because I would see images of her embracing him and hugging him and calling him, oh, this is my baby. But how can you say that you love this young man and persecute his mother on right. either side? How could either of them do that? For Steve to constantly say, oh, I love Winton, and on one show, um, and I don't ever watch. I can't ever watch. When my family say they've seen something, I use the way for it to go to YouTube, and that way I can watch it in my own discretion. So right. that if I'm in a bad mood, I can just click and go back. But I never watch the show. But in one particular scene, he was talking to Winton, and I think it was after Winton had moved out of the house. Okay. And Winton uh, was on the show, and Steve had said to Winton at the end of this segment, I love you more than I love myself. And I said to myself, how can that be? If you love him more than you love yourself, why, are, why have you sabotaged our relationship? You know, what's the problem? What is the problem here? How can you possibly love your son, yet you persecute his mother? So those are things that people don't see or maybe people don't talk about, but that's the, my reality, you know? He's got the show and he's got the access to the public to where he can let them see what he wants them to see. They even, feel in like the a case, even in the case of Marjorie, it's like, oh, we love Winton, we're going to embrace Winton, 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 and they take all these little stage photos, and they have all these little stage shows, you know, but behind the scene, that's child abuse. And it comes in all kind of forms. You can be mentally and emotionally abusive. It's not always about putting your hands on a child that qualifies for child abuse. So imagine him having to have to live in that atmosphere of the pretense when he knows on the real side what's actually going on. And that's something that we live through. That's something we live through every day. And people don't get to see that. So, you know, a lot of times... Uh, people will make comments, you know, well, Mary needs to get over it and Mary needs to move on as if I've done the deed, you know, and it's not me. All right. I'm not the one being vicious. For the two of them to continue to isolate me from Winton and from his life and to have interfered all these years, who's bitter here? Who's really bitter? Yeah, I was about to ask you that. Are you bitter? Who's bitter? You know, I'm not... I'm not trying to 
uh, interfere mm -hmm. with Marjorie's relationship with her children. I'm not trying to in any way. And there are people on the internet with gazillion videos out there talking about her and her past or whatever. That's not me saying those things. Those are other people. But how do you, to me, in my everyday, I am moving on in the sense that I'm trying to live with what was done. And this was not about two people got a divorce. People do divorce every day. And there are extended family situations that exist every day, which I applaud people that can do that, especially if the children are involved. There's no point in all this other. But what bothers me is that this was not just a divorce. This was people sitting down in a room conspiring to forge documents to literally leave me by the side of the road dead in every sense of the word. Let's take the child. Let's take the fortune. Let's take the home. Let's bury her. And that part of it I didn't get. You know, when I filed for divorce, I was trying to get out of a bad situation. So you filed for divorce. Filed. You left him. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. I divorced Steve. Steve did not divorce me. I divorced Steve. And it was the fourth time that I had actually filed because I was truly trying to save my family and save my marriage because I was from a broken home in every sense of the word. But like I said, people do get divorced. They do. I was just trying to take my children, take my share, and go over there to say, can't do it anymore. I can't do it. Whomever you're seeing, however many you're seeing, go do that. I got to go over here. And I do not know how that morphed into judges being conspired with, judges, my own lawyers being paid off, police departments, uh, city officials. I'm like, what, what is going on? So that is like one nightmare that will not go away, you know? When you're at your home with your child and here comes the police, how, how do you move forward from that nightmare that you're standing in the front yard of your house and here comes the police saying that we are coming to get him because we're sorry, ma'am. And these were their words exactly. We're sorry, ma'am. This has nothing to do with us, but we're doing what we were told to do. How do you move away from that? Well, I'm definitely going to need you guys' opinions in this situation because y'all know I don't get other people's business like that. Well, we're about to be out of here, but before we go, we want you guys to leave us a like. And remember to subscribe to our channel for the juiciest gossip commentary around. And don't be shy. Leave us your opinions in the comments. Good, bad, or indifferent. I love them all. And with that being said, you guys, we are out of here.